Hey everyone, my name is Alexandra and I am a watercolor artist. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different with you guys and we are going to be painting a fall wreath craft. This is something that you guys can honestly either do with yourselves or something that if you guys want to do a craft this fall with your kids, then they will definitely be able to follow along. Let's get started. For supplies today, I'm gonna to keep it super simple so that it's easy for you guys to follow along, but you guys will need one or two cups for water. I like to have two just so I can have one for clean, one for dirty water. I have a plastic cup that I'm okay with getting some paint onto. I have here some gold ink. If you guys have, you can choose whatever color you want, but either ink or acrylic would work perfectly fine. Napkin for drying my paintbrush, 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. And for paint today, I'm using Art Philosophy & Co's Woodlands palette. I'm using a mixture of sort of the browns, reds, and greens, just any fall colors that you can think of. And for paint brushes, I'm using um, Princeton <laughs> rounds numbers six and eight. Again, if you guys are painting this with your kids, then honestly, whatever watercolor paper, paint, and brushes you want to use will work perfectly fine. So the first thing that we're going to do is make our shape for our wreath. So that is why I have my plastic cup here and my gold ink. I have a paintbrush here that I don't typically use for my watercolor just because I don't want to ruin my watercolor brushes with the gold ink. But what I'm going to do is get some of my ink here onto my brush. I'm actually just gonna dip it straight in there. And then I'm gonna go onto my cup and I'm painting it all the way around my rim here. And again, if you guys don't have ink, you can definitely do this with acrylics. And it doesn't have to be gold. I just feel like it's a nice color for fall. But the idea is that I'm getting it all the way around the rim of my cup. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna go onto my paper and I'm just gonna press down and do a couple circles that are just gonna be the center for where our wreath is gonna go. So you can have fun with this if you guys want. You can do one big piece of paper and do a couple wreaths on it, but I am just gonna start with the one in the center here. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna go in and add some leaves and make it look nice and fall ish folly I don't know what you call that <laughs> look nice for autumn <laughs> so now that our wreath is dry we are going to go in and just start by adding some leaves so I'm going to start with my number eight brush and I'm going to go into my cavern color here which is just kind of an orangey brown paint and I'm actually just going to work my way around and paint some leaves in so I'm using my brush, I'm gonna put the tip of my paintbrush down and I'm just applying some pressure into sort of some C-curve shapes to make these leaves here. So I'm getting kind of that teardrop shape. These ones I'm doing them a little bit bigger. I can scatter them however I'd like. I like to choose kind of a central point to do some other details on my paintings. So what I might do is right at this point here on the bottom right hand side is switch directions and I can have my leaves coming up the other way and it's okay if you guys scatter them just around your different rings that you've painted. And this we're just using the concept that you're spacing them out all the way around your wreath. This is something that's super easy to follow along with. So now we're gonna go with our smaller brush and we'll add some other things into here. So I'm gonna go into my Foxberry Red and we're gonna add some little red leaves now. These ones I actually want to do little branches coming off with some really small leaves. So I'm using my gold ring as my main point. I'm gonna start from this top end here and I'm painting a really skinny line coming down 
and I'm just doing essentially a mini version of these big leaves and I'm painting tiny little teardrops coming down and attaching to that main stem. And it's okay if your colors sort of bleed into each other or into things that you've already painted. It's all good. We are just having fun with this one. With some of these, I might overlap where I've already painted my leaves. And nothing has to be too perfect. Now this is something that if the small little leaves are a little bit too tricky to do, then you guys can definitely stick with just these big ones that I painted initially here. And also depending on how big your cup is that you used for your wreath size, it can definitely make it easier if you guys are painting on a bigger page. So I'm just keeping in mind the center point that I had kind of chosen at the beginning and filling in the gaps. As you guys can see, I have some of my leaves facing inwards on my wreath. Some of them are facing outwards and we're just working our way around. This is also something that if you guys have any occasions to give cards this time of year, it's such a fun thing to do where you can put it onto a card um, and if your kids want to give cards as well it's a really fun way for them to really personalize it. Okay so now that I have those I want to add in a flower sort of into this focal point here. Um, again I want to keep to those really fall <laughs> fall colors so I'm gonna go and mix a little bit more of an orange color on my palette. As you guys can see my green has or my yellow has been mixed with green a few too many times so I just have to clean that off a bit. Get back to the yellow there. There we go. Or if you guys have orange paint, then use that. But in this case, I have to mix my yellow with my red. And then I can add a little bit of this redwood color here. Now that I have this sort of brown orange color, I am going to paint just a super simple flower in the corner here. And I'm just gonna go sort of like a rose where I'm kind of just swirling petals around each other. Honestly, it could be any flower. Something that's really nice to do here as well is sunflowers. But the idea with this is that I'm just painting petals kind of in a continuous circle. And this just gives a really nice focal point for our wreath. You guys definitely also have the option of just continuing your leaves all the way around rather than adding a flower in. But now that I've done this, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of green. I want to keep my green nice and muted just to really match with the autumn colors that I have here. So to do that, I'm actually gonna mix it with just a touch of this orange brown color that I made and it's just gonna tone it down just a little bit. And I can go off of this flower that I just painted here and I can add some green leaves. And I'm just keeping everything really light, really loose. We're not adding a ton of detail. I can add a few more green leaves in 
throughout the entirety of my wreath and following the exact same concept as with all of the other things where I'm simply just spacing them out all the way around until I'm happy with how it looks. All right, so I'm going to leave it at that for this fall wreath painting. This is something that you guys can keep adding to. I always know that with wreaths, I have to decide when to stop so that I don't fill them with too many things. But this is our beautiful, simple fall wreath that is easy enough that you guys can do it as a craft with your kids. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys are interested in more watercolor projects that you can do with your kids as well, please leave a comment below and let me know. I would love to hear from you guys. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. We'll see you next time.